My name is Tim. I'd like to welcome everybody to the College of Complexes. Our moderator tonight is going to be Don. Please take over. Let's give our hand for Don. Thanks, Tim. Okay, um, Okay. welcome to the College of Complexes. Uh, my name is Don, and, and like as Tim said, I'm going to be moderator this evening. Now, um, uh, I have some unfortunate news. First of all, our, our schedule, now, the presentation scheduled for tonight was, to get it out here, uh, there's no two, first of all, okay, um, the, the, the presentation scheduled for tonight was a bipartisan contract for Chicago to solve common problems um, with, with the speaker Kimball Ledeen. However, uh, Kimball Ledeen could not be here tonight, so uh, instead we're going to have a different program. Uh, our our um, the our program coordinator Charlie. Say he had a heart attack. Okay, okay. Uh, he had. A, I did not know that Charlie, but apparently he had a heart attack. So um, so instead, our program coordinator Charlie Paydock is going to be speaking tonight about the uh, the Green New Deal. Now uh, now because of this unexpected change in in programming. Uh, we're not going to charge tuition tonight, so except for the meal, it's uh, the college tonight is free. Okay, so now let me just take, all right. Now let me just uh, let me just I'll just be very brief here. I just want to uh, tell you, you know, I think most of you have been here before, but for those of you who are not familiar with the college format, I will explain uh, briefly how it works. We uh, we will start off having some announcements about upcoming events in the community, and then Charlie's going to speak. His lecture is uh, should take approximately 20 minutes. After Charlie's lecture, we will have uh, questions and answers, and that will be, I would like to say to everybody that that should be a time for questions, not for comments. You can, uh, after the Q&A session, we will have our infamous rebuttal period, for which the college is justly famous. During that time, anyone here in the audience can come up to the podium and have five minutes to make as big a fool out of themselves as they want. And you can talk about anything you want. Talk about Charlie, uh, whatever. Now, we don't have, now, now, Charlie will get to have the final word, since he's the speaker tonight. Now, uh, we need yeah. to be out, now we also, we need to be out of here by 8.45 p.m. Um, so, um, so we will conclude that. Now we don't have a whole lot of rules. We the, we do have two rules. The first rule is one fool at a time. So, the uh, persons interrupting the the speaker, yeah. or the, the person no, speaking, right. yeah, like yeah. that, will be reminded of the rule. Everybody, repeat after me: one yeah, fool at a time. Yeah. That's right. Now, yeah. the second rule we have is no personal attacks. Right. Oh. No. That's a serious rule, folks, because we've almost had fights break out here at the college because of personal attacks. That's, that's serious business. All right. Now, but I'm sure none of you would want to attack Charlie anyway. Now, now second, now I would also like to ask, in, 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 uh, as a corollary to the one fool at a time rule, that you, uh, that you uh, uh, silence your cell phone. So in other words, turn, either turn the phone off or, or set it, or turn the ringer off and set it to vibrate. I am actually going to turn mine. I'm going to set mine to vibrate so it won't ring and interrupt the speaker. And uh, okay, all right then. Without further ado, let's have a warm round of applause for our speaker this evening, Charles Paydock. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate your kind words. Right. Uh, you know how to turn it on, right? That good stuff. You know how to turn it on, right, Charles? Yeah. We off and rolling, Timmy. Just hit that top button on there on the remote. The top button on the remote. Point of the computer. The top button. There you go. You're, look at my computer there. All right. Um. Let's see where we're going to get. Our our topic tonight originally had been uh, plans for improving. Actually, mentioned made it Chicago, but. They actually had worldwide applications. So I said as substitution, what other plan can I talk about? And this one is in the news and has been and will continue to be in the news from some time. Uh, it's called the Green New Deal. And I'll give you some background on that. Um, the uh, but uh, and actually, there's there's two parts to this presentation. 
One is an explanation of the Green New Deal as it relates to ecology, and the second part as it relates to implementation. Um, but I figured that this one is, is, is timely and should be of interest to all of you, and you can impress your friends when somebody mentions the Green New Deal, you could say, oh, I know all about that. It's a roadmap to nowhere. I learned that from the real good guy presentation at the College of Complex. But anyhow, the term Green New Deal is not necessarily new. Uh, it was used uh, by Jill Stein, who's a candidate of the Green Party for president as part of her platform. It's been used by Greens in Germany and elsewhere in Europe uh, for various ecological pr uh, proposals. Uh, so it's not really new, and it's even been around in various forms, perhaps not that exact term, uh, going back uh, even in the United States for various years. Um, the term came in because, uh, as many or all of you are aware, uh, in this past election uh, in New Jersey, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez was elected um, a representative to, uh, to unseat the incumbent. And she's of Democratic Socialist persuasion, as I am. Um, she won the election. I'm not to discredit her. She campaigned hard, but it was a fluke. Does anybody know what a fluke is? All right. Uh, but anyhow, this is this is. They're looking to make this, and when I uh, when I say they, the it's uncertain origin about the. We'll get into that, but. Um, the, the intent of this is um, immediate, immediate intent was to establish a committee in Congress to look at climate change legislation and introduce initiatives. However, the ultimate goal was to make it the issue of the presidential campaign in 2020. So you're way ahead of the game here. All right, let's see. But what is the Green New Deal? Um, it's written by, and I did my research here, a, a progressive think tank uh, called Data for Progress. Now, if you go to the College Complex website and go to January and the, the announcement for this program, you'll have a link to the Green New Deal. It's about 37 pages. You also will get a link up there as well to the proposal that was submitted to Congress. This is the official document uh, that was submitted to the Speaker of the House. Uh, so if you go to the website, you'll get it. But here's the green think tank that put this together, and we're gonna look at it. It basically covers two areas. The green initiatives, policy changes, uh, ecological changes that they are seeking, and the second part is more importantly, the transition or implementation of these. And this is where you're getting into something called, uh, a few years ago, they came up with a thing called um, eco-socialism. And this goes back a number of years, and there was some, to me it was something to interest people, young people, they weren't people, to be honest with you, young people weren't interested in socialism, so they said maybe if we make eco-socialism will attract people, and that's kind of the quick explanation of it. But this, this Green New Deal is in its two phases, two parts, that I'll talk about exactly what could be termed eco-socialism, because uh, it goes well beyond um, simply the ecological thing. Okay, what does it consist of? <laughs> All right, um, they have different lists, but I'll read these to you. You don't have to look it all in. Um, but the first one is they want to transform to a low carbon economy, a low carbon economy. Second thing is they think that if, if they want to focus 
and everyone has a right to clean air and water. Now, a lot of people claim they have a right to something. The only rights you have, I'll tell you, are those that are defined by law. If it's not defined by law, it's not a right. So, but if they get to this legislation passed, it will in fact be a right. And the third part is they want to restore the American landscape. We'll get into that. They want to look at that 40 million acres of land. The uh, fourth part is uh, sustainability of the urban environment. And one thing that isn't covered too much, we'll cover this later, uh, resilience to climate change. Looking at some of you, I think you guys, climate change, this is not discussed too often, but it, well, climate change is going to have different impacts on different groups and different locations, obviously. So they call it resilient. Are you guys and gals resilient? I don't know. Now this is where I mean about implementation, <coughs> the social socialism. Uh, they, they put a generation to work, and they want to ensure just transition. Now one of the things that has happened is the Republican Party has mercilessly jumped on Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who's as green as can be, as somehow the spokesperson for the entire Democratic Party. And they're using her and unfairly. Is Tim I mean, she's, she's a rookie. And they're, that's what I mean. They're using her. And they're, and they're using this Green New Deal strictly uh, to discredit the Democrats in the U.S. Congress and ultimately the Democratic candidate for, for president. So anything you get on this, this social media, especially this, you know, uh, even that one senator who was saying, like, why is this young lady in the news so much? There is some excitement among the social democrats. They got somebody elected. They're kind of a new organization and getting their people elected. There's another thing. There was a group called the Justice Democrats, and they weren't able to get anybody elected. That's just part of this uh, in there. But, um, uh, yeah, but uh, that's what I mean. It isn't just that it, it's the Republicans are feeding this, and they're using it and they'll do anything to discredit her as a representative, and in essence, they're discrediting the Democrats and their, whoever their candidate is for president. So keep that in mind. All right, where did the Green New Deal come? Another thing, the Green Green Deal actually came out of, the, I believe, the Climate Action Network. It's been around for many, many years out of Washington. Um, let's see what else they where they were gathering, you might have seen this on the news, they had protests in Washington, 51 of them were arrested in the congressional office. This is a, this is a hallway in the, in the U.S. Congress uh, office building, I recognize it, but they took their message to Congress. I don't know if I would have protested a Democrat, I thought they should have been picking on the Republicans, but anyhow, yeah. Next is in some more photos. Now this is the logo they have chosen. It comes out of, they call themselves the Sunrise Movement. They look neither left nor right, but towards the sunrise or central or whatever. Okay. Oh, I don't know. Oh, this is, do uh, whatever. But anyhow, there you can see. Um, actually, that's, that struck me as odd. That's the only office in Congress that has a chandelier. I mean, I have that one. but they had protests in Washington. They just had some yesterday. Okay. And the Green New Deal is a broad and ambitious package of, this is the whole lecture right here, new policies and investments and infrastructure and technology. There it is. So it's like, let's take a look at our policies and ultimately to help the United States achieve economic sustainability and economic stability. You all want economic stability, right? Okay. All right. You don't have to read all of these. I put a lot of these in there 
just for myself to read. But the draft of it says they want to, they want to have the plan executed within 10 years. I mean, this is very ambitious, in which the United States will be fully powered by renewable energy sources. <laughs> and, on a, and they call it, the entire nation will be on an energy efficient smart grid within 10 years. So um, anyhow, uh, they want to upgrade every residential and resi industrial building across the country for state-of-the-art energy efficiency and decarbonizing. This is basically called green, green building technology. It's been around for a number of years. I had to put out a publication on this uh, a few years ago. Um, on green building technology. Architects get certification in it. Uh, it. Transportation and buildings are the major two uses of energy and pollution and sources of pollution. Uh, so uh, we also often hear about energy production or other things, but buildings themselves, uh, the heating and cooling of buildings and transportation, <coughs> are the two that buy, uh, account for the vast majority of the issues regarding the causes of climate change that we hear about. Um, another thing I just want to talk about that's kind of interesting about the Green New Deal is down here, we'll get into this later, is they, they offer plans, they want to draw down, draw down greenhouse gases. And that means capture them, it's like cleaning the atmosphere, basically. So, you don't see that too often. I was surprised to see that in there. All right, any questions so far, children? No. Um, are you finished with your lecture, Charlie? No. no. Okay. Let's wait till the end of the session, Charlie. Yeah, all right, you want me to wait? Yeah. Hold yeah. on. Um, I have a question. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Um, when you talk about drawing down CO2, there's no technique that works. Well, plant more trees. Well, it's a tree. Well, it's a tree, yeah, but uh, you got to do better than that if you're going to get enough of it out of the atmosphere to reverse what's going on. What are you saying, Andy? Uh, there's a global movement toward reforestation, and it's called restorative agriculture. All right, we'll continue that. We've got more slides on that. Okay, we've got one coming up. We can re revisit that issue. I see I've got some knowledgeable people here. All right, what else are we at now? Uh, let's, the bottom line is we are facing challenges that are unsustainable. We have to do something. There's no choice left in this. Now we've had some fragmentary regulation and legislation beginning with the establishment of things such as the EPA. They come and they go and so forth. But these, this piecemeal approach to the problem of, of climate change is no longer sufficient. Um, and uh, the climate crisis is only worsening. Okay. So let's go on here. All right, and we need to shift to a sustainable two aspects. We need this is what I mean. The game plan's kind of cool. They want to have a sustainable environment and an economy. They want to transform the U.S. economy. That's what I was talking about. There's socialistic elements in this plan, which you don't normally see in some of the other things written about ecological issues. So this one has a, you know, uh, another element to it. And now the, the common thing you're going to hear from the, the Republican Party, and I saw this watching all the legislation that when they were in the House voting on environmental amendments, and they keep claiming this, and if you buy into this or not, but there's a trade-off between the environment or the economy. And, and these guys say that's a false, that's not true. There's a trail. Like if you have, oh, this is going to, we need jobs. Yeah, and the greenies are going to take our jobs. 
and implement regulations and close down the factories, what have you. It, uh, this is the mantra of one political party. Um, I don't know if they can continue saying that. Um, but uh, the, the goal of the Green New Deal is, is to, as a matter of fact, rather not harm, harm employment, but to enhance it. All right, moving on. Where are we at here? Now these are the four central elements of the Green New Deal. And it's not just renewable energy or jobs program. It's a transition, they claim, <coughs> to the new economy. That's what I mean. This has got a little more horizon to it, so to speak, in scope. This is broad scope. There's narrow scope. This is very broad scope. They want to trans, as we've covered already, a low carbon economy. No problem for that. Clean, clean air and water. Restore the American land, the landscape, and as we covered before, permanent sustainability and resilience. You guys, are right, moving on. Okay. Um, trend of getting into, we only go into detail, and the that's what I mean. There's two parts. I'm going to go through the green part first, and then we're going to get into the economic part, the transition or implementation later. Uh, first is okay. They want a, we want a low carbon economy. Uh, we've got to reduce emissions by 16% to, to, to make the Paris Accord agreements and 70% to reach the target of 70% we've got to cut down to reach the target of 2050. Um, that's why you've got groups like 3050 out there, things like that. But uh, in, or, it, in order to meet the target goals, We've got to do something about it, and at the moment, we're doing, what do you think we're doing to meet the target goals? Nothing. Zero. Doing absolutely nothing. Okay. Uh, another part of it, the second part, is they're looking for clean and renewable energy by 2035. Can we get it? Um, by using uh, other means. Now this is a little thing I caught, Tim, in their literature, and there seems to be a contradiction here, that if you look carefully in there, <laughs> they're willing to accept nuclear. Good. Good. I noticed that, but on other parts of their thing, they claim that they're not, so they need to do some editing here. <clears throat> and anyhow, the clean by 2035, uh, is zero emissions by 2050. 2050, no more fossil fuels. Absolutely. I think that's being a little generous. I wouldn't give them that long. Okay, the other thing I mentioned, moving on, very quickly, 100% uh, net zero building energy standards. Uh, we, we build buildings for, that stand and operate for 100 years. Uh, but these buildings are not in line. Actually, the major thing about buildings is the lack of standardization. So much that could be done, retrofitting in, in original construction, building codes and things like that. Um, but anyhow, we're using outdated technology and we're building buildings in a medieval fashion in many respects. Okay, that's green building. Uh, you see we got a transportation guy there in the back who keeps looking at his uh, telephone instead of paying attention to me. Um, but transportation uh, is another thing I mentioned. We want zero emission passenger vehicles by 2030. Um, that's self-explanatory. And fossil-free transportation by 2050. In aviation, uh, heavy duty and rail. Um, okay. Now there's one little flyer, and they do acknowledge this here. Much to their credit here is that they're saying perhaps there's difficulty here, is that not everything can be electrified. I don't know. That's a debatable topic. That <coughs> All right. Regarding clean air and clean water, they claim that you have a right to it. Uh, as I said, the only rights you have are those that are written and codified. 
in, in the law, in the statute. You don't make up rights, but they claim you have a right to clean air and water. Perhaps by virtue of citizenship, there is some validity to that. Uh, failure to provide quality. Actually, I think it should be. But um, progress is slow, uh, and now it's even been reversed in this regard, regarding the reverse legislation under the Trump administration. Next one, clean air. 42% of the U.S. population live in areas that don't meet the standards. There's a lot of people, the ambient air quality standards. They have substandard air. Particulates are still too high. And 27 states, 22 states, do not meet the ozone standards. So in terms of people like think, oh, we've got to get to climate change to get those goals, we're not even reaching minimum standards. We've got to get that far first uh, before we are showing really any genuine progress. Uh, and there's a new one here, that uh, methane leakage um, from the oil and gas industry. Uh, these, they cost the U.S. economy $2 billion annually. And these methane leaks are enough to power six and a half million homes a year. And methane, people think CO2 um, is a uh, real bad greenhouse gas. There's some other ones out there that are really, really, really bad, and methane is one of them. It's 28 to 36 more times more potent or if it's more hazardous, if you wish, uh, than CO2. Okay, moving on. You guys all want clean water? Uh, lead pipe replacement, we don't need to get into this. But anyhow, 18 million people apparently are still being served by lead piping. Um, the current administration is not spending anything. Where are you at there? That guy, big guy, I was talking with you, I told you guys, that there's no money being spent on infrastructure. The Republicans don't care if you drink water through lead pipes. They gave no allocation to improvements of infrastructure. Zero. The totality of the Republican proposal to, well, they did, wait a minute, they did say something for rural roads. So if you live in, in Hope, Kentucky, Corn Cobb, Iowa, you might get paved road. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you wouldn't even here get get into the terrace. But anyhow, um, but and, and spending on infrastructure is, is way down. Um, also, affordable drinking water. We covered that last week, as a matter of fact, and it and it's almost. 10% of the people, households in Detroit have had their water shut off. So we got to do something about that. This is a new one I kind of like. We don't know how to cover. Is that 2 million miles of waterways in the United States? Uh, these have to be uh, uh, come in terms with the clean water rule. Do you think it's all finished and done? That's hardly the case. Uh, there's also, in addition to 2 million, 2 million miles, uh, the uh, 20 million uh, uh, acres of wetlands and the Republican administration in office, I hate to keep harping on, on negative aspects, but they simply removed the executive order uh, recovering lakes. So there's not good news coming out of Washington. So maybe this Green New Deal is something we should look for. They don't care if lakes get polluted. They're, well, they're claiming it was a it was a bothersome to agriculture. You know, it, it, uh, it interfered with agricultural op operations. Um, what is this? All right, here we go. Restore uh, landscape and forest. Uh, Forty million acres. The public and private land. They want to plant trees. Uh, I'm all for that. Trees are pretty cool. Um, but, um, and this, they, the idea is to create uh, uh, emissions absorbed by land. And the forests are in need of restoration. Here's the other thing. 
the forests we have are, because of climate change, are threatened by drought, wildflower, and invasive species, which has been exacerbated by climate change. So instead of increasing the forest, we're going to have to do something even to maintain the forest that we have. Um, anyhow, they want 40 to 50 million acres of forest, and, and this would achieve reductions of 600 million tons of carbon dioxide. Well, that's kind of, that's a nice cleansing. Um, anyhow, that's what I mean, draw it out. Where else are we going here? And another topic that isn't often covered in ecological things are wetlands. I must say in my life, I've probably you know, been in a wetland only once or twice, but there's five million acres of these, and they are very important ecological features. They, they have a very specific um, uh, element, function to serve in, the, in terms of the environment and certainly the uh, wildlife that attracts, but they want to act as water filtration and certainly are important. Anyhow, I just threw in another thing here at the bottom. Whoops. Um, I wanted to point out that this, since we're talking about wetlands, is that I, here's something really serious, even though we're in the central part of the country, that 133 million people live on shorelines. Uh, and, and 41 million people live in floodplains. So global warming is a very serious issue uh, to these people. Um, let's see, move along real quick. Uh, urban, now this one's kind of interesting. This one I kind of find, I didn't say read much about this, but urban sustainability, um, people moving to the cities, uh, it has to be dealt with differently. Uh, the other thing is, yeah, there, um, is, is sustainability and resilience. Um, but anyhow, this is um, this is what we're going to have to do. People are in in urban environments are going to be particularly susceptible to climate change. Uh, and in that regard, precautions must be taken. Let's see what else we got here. Let me get my page turner here. Okay, now we're back again. Uh, another feature that they want to do is expand public green space. More parks and outdoor recreation enhance the beauty of the environment. It goes, goes without saying, everybody likes to take their girlfriend, you know, have your girlfriend make you a nice picnic basket, you know, and go on a picnic, you know. Yeah. You, she could, you can see how, if she can bake an apple pie or not, you know, and see if it's any good, you know. <laughs> you know, girls still know how to bake apple pie. But anyhow, the next thing is, where's that transportation guy? Uh, yeah, this is me too. Urban mass mobility and transportation. Uh, we're talking about resilience in cities. Uh, certainly augmenting, there's only six major transit systems in the United States, and we certainly need more than that of any magnitude. Waste. This is the thing, that's what I mean. Look at this, I've been talking all along, and it's only now, normally in ecological, you think of that, Kiko, you think of waste, and it was only now that we got to it. But the one thing you have to keep, i summarize the whole thing right here for you there in the first slide. Waste is just a resource without a market. But there's no, no market for it. But you've got to get at the beginning, design products to minimize waste. Uh, you know, I was thinking these things that, that plastic that they, you're using these days, you can't even cut into it. My God, what is that stuff? It's indestructible. I'm serious. I can't open some of the packages, like buy, buy some batteries. I, said, I couldn't open it. I go, you know. I, I mean, what is that? What are they making it out of? But anyhow, a zero waste economy. Uh, again, more on methane there. Uh, there's the vegans maintain 
that the EDU meet is the single best solution to climate change and to reduce the methane in the livestock, which is a matter of some issue here. All right, now we're getting in, into the uh, implementation, almost done. Only got two or three left here. But there's a lot written here. You don't have to read it all. But Ocasio-Cortez plan it imagines that certain things I put in here that are kind of interesting. She wants a nationwide job force to, to participate in the transition to the, all we've heard this already. So this is where we get, we get the, in the economic aspects of this. Always the question is, you go to lobby in Congress, they say, well, who's going to pay for it? And these people have thought ahead, and this is what they're thinking of in the transition. Now, um, uh, they actually even claim that everyone as a result of implementing this program uh, will be assured a living wage if you want one. And they also claim, I didn't read it here, but they also claim that this transition will eliminate um, poverty in the United States um, through this program here. Um, but anyhow, the last part is um, they also think if they should, should, you could focus the intent of the programs on minority communities. Um, okay. Let's see what else. Do. The next one, a little bit further. Um, they also even think that social equality might be realized through the use of reparations for historical injustices. Now that may be a rather controversial one. Um, and they also want to have universal income and Medicare for all. Now, this is where the Republicans are really seizing on this. They're saying this is nothing but so implementing socialism. But there's wide-ranging interplans here. Um, but we're talking about the people doing the implementation and, and the active participants. Okay. One other thing I came across uh, that might be kind of interesting as an achievable goal our environmental justice standards. I found this kind of interesting. What are the basic standards that we should have achieved regarding ecological issues and policy? Um, the next one is, and we're almost home free, on uh, disproportionate impacts. Now this is the new, this is one of the kind of interesting. That's what I mean, there are so many things they talk about in the transition, but, um, Climate change is going to affect um, different, different, there's going to be, uh, it's not uniform. You think, well, it's just the earth. No, that's not, that's not going to be the case. Uh, some are going to suffer more so than others. And in particular, um, certain populations are disproportionately vulnerable and will be affected. And the very last line, um, there's climate gentrification, um, meaning the poor people will not be able to ameliorate or move out of harm's way. So if you don't have the means to afford um, the, yeah, the, the conditions, um, exactly. So that's what I mean. Economics will play a part on, on the severity to which climate change affects you or I, your ability to afford. And last of all, I want to thank you very much for this presentation. I hope you learned something. There you go. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that logo on the go. And next time, be sure to come and get yourself the literature in the back on the Chicago Greens, which I encourage your membership. Anybody? Wants a copy of the proposal for Congress. Um, yeah, they're, they're planning a committee. Uh, I, I, you know, there's no incorrect or correct way of doing it. There was a, a committee on the environment, 
But from 207, 211, under the Democrats, Republicans came in. That disappeared, the Climate Change Committee, uh, whether or not. But anyhow, uh, the goal of the Green New Deal was to establish a committee. There are plenty of committees. This is a multi-committee issue, by the way. So I don't know if necessary. I kind of agree with Speaker Pelosi. You don't perhaps need another one. Uh, this should be possibly distributed among the committees that are, that are existing because they are the ones that are the most experienced in this regard. Especially like you have a committee on infrastructure. So you're going to have duplicate things like that. It actually causes a little confusion. So I don't think they were really saying no. But logistically, we get it. You can't, there's actually possibly too many committees already. Okay. It's difficult to keep track and to see what, what influence they have. Okay. All right, thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, great. Take all right. The all right, okay. turn off the projector. All right, now listen, I'm, uh, let's, we're going to have the question and answer session now. And I'm going to, uh, now if you have a question, raise your hand and I will call on, on, the, on the people who have questions. Okay? Uh, all right, now Doug's had his hand up for a while, so go ahead, Doug. Yeah, um, is this a new green deal? Does it uh, allow for uh, that there could be like a uh, Chemical, chemical breakthrough that will enable us to have uh, uh, artificial trees that would help in uh, removing the carbon dioxide. All right, in other words, are the people in favor of this, are they um, willing to accept that there might need if to be... If somebody invents an artificial tree, who's, is somebody working on this? Yeah, there are groups working on that. I'm is this a genetic tree or? No, it'd be made be out of materials, and it would have chemical scrubbers. It would scrub the carbon dioxide. Well, that doesn't sound like a tree. It sounds like a machine. It's an artificial, artificial tree. Yeah, artificial tree, Charlie. Yeah. Well, you know, it, if it gets gets, gets the good the job done, you know, I, I personally, anytime you steer away from the natural. You're making a mistake. So go ahead. If you, you, the classic thing is that technology will save us, right? But if you play, yeah, if go you so many be, hey, technology, wait. my friend, got us in this problem. Well, you can't play. So you think it is a solve? No, it is not. Hey, Doug, Doug. Absolutely not. Okay. All right. And I just want to. I would like to remind everyone present, and, and especially Doug. That, uh, that no heckling, the rules were yeah. at the time. Yeah, yeah you don't know the rules. Now you don't know the rules. You don't know the rules. All right, all right, all right. Let's get out. All right, get out of here. All right, now Gene has his hand up. All right, Gene. Gene has his hand up. Let's go down. Gene has his hand up. 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 It is not legislation yet. It's the basis for legislation. But have any of our local U.S. reps endorsed either the plan or put in legislation that will yes. put it into effect? Yes. Which, yes who uh, is it? They were. They were. Uh, which one? Okay. Uh, first of all, the legislative. As of yesterday, they had 45. Congressman at Quigley yeah, and uh, from the seventh, what's his name? No, no, no. The uh, Bobby Rush Davis? No, Senate, he said. No, no, the House uh, guy. Durbin? No. Uh, Brad Schneider. Black guy. Danny Davis? Danny Davis. 45 is a pretty good number for. Uh, uh, as I say, you know, in this kid, they're not endorsing it. That's what it means. I, they're, they're, you know, the one thing about the, this group putting this, running this, they're sort of doing things standard, and then they're doing things non-standard. To say you endorse, they're not endorsing a piece of legislation. It's like endorsing a concept. So what it, you endorse. You know this, H.R. 9, or, you know, until it's given some, you know, documentation. 
bipartisanly, you know, the, the, the full implementation of all these proposals would probably require, I would say, dozens of separate pieces of legislation, very complex pieces of legislation. The totality of what they wrote is about five pages here. And th that's not a, the economic, you're going to change the economy of the United States on the basis, you know, there's, so, there's, so, so every journey begins with a thousand, one step. So we're at the inception stage. Yeah, right now, yeah, are you, if you want, um, the thing that I showed you, the very second slide, that 37 page thing, that's entire, that entire document is, is written by somebody who knows what they're doing because one third of it contains information of why the elected representative would support a Green New Deal. It gives, them, it gives polls, polling data and demographics and it says this not only is this a good thing, but it's probably good for you if you want to get reelected. Right. So it's a selling book. It's advertising. All right, yeah. Mike, you have yeah. a question? Yeah, I got a question for Charlie. All right. All right. Two parts. Two parts. Two parts. Two parts. Two parts. Two parts. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, your buddies Lipinski and Quigley, are they bamboozled by this Elon Musk dude in this silly tunnel stuff? And what, what other points? I'm, I'm, wait a minute, slow down, slow down. Oh, you mean, are they, well, there's been nothing in Congress regarding the Musk, you mean his, his design for a new transportation mode? Yeah. There's nothing been, that I'm aware of, Mike, that has been introduced in Congress. That's great, that's great. So what, so what have they done? Uh, Quigley and Lipinski it sound like they're the only infrastructure people. What have they done? Yeah. Regarding... Infrastructure. Well, Quigley is not on the infrastructure committee that I'm aware of. Lipinski is, and uh, he's basically his interest is in the railroad industry. Freight trains? Whatever, freight, passenger, and railroad. Railroad. They don't have any tangible plan? I mean, honestly, I'm not. That's your congressman, you know. I, I get this. Well, the thing is, I subscribe to the newsletter from that committee. And the committee puts out what their activities are. And I, they're, pretty, they're not really good at putting anything out. I'll be honest with you. And they put out some a new press release literally once every three or four months. Sounds like you need to sit down with them. Okay. I see them every year when I go in. You see Lipinski? Yeah. All right. He says, hi, Charles. Huh? He says, hi, Charles. That's all he says. All right. What's he uh, supposed okay, to say? My second what question. What's he supposed to say? All right. My second question. Get out of here. Here's your truck. <laughs> I see that what I'm saying is I see him so often I know him and his chief of staff and other people on the staff and I regularly communicate with them okay my second part on an ongoing basis on sundry issues okay okay the heck with the sundry uh, the second question is have you done anything with the New York Chicago bullet train with the Congress no we're looking I, I was thinking about with the new Congress coming in, maybe let's see what we can do. But it's a little early in the game. The committees haven't even been finalized. Okay. They've had months to work on this. All right. All right. They didn't know who was going to be listen, elected. I think this would make a great topic for a rebuttal speech, Mike. And listen, Ellen, Ellen Corley had her hand up for a question. So you have a question, don't you, Ellen? Okay, go ahead. All right. Yeah. I, my concern, and I'm speak to this, would be whether... You know, I look at this Green New Deal online, and the first, it's by the New Re the National Review, you know, William Buckley's magazine. So, you know, she has a plan, you know, it brings on 70% increase in taxes for the rich, the super rich. What I've read, and I do think it might be a concern, is that 
these kind of propaganda memes are developed by the right wing and as a way of whipping boy, you know, Ocasio on her first day. The, the two articles that have been put in by the right wing yeah, media one, go is, you know, that that other Vito, whatever his name is in Texas, and Ocasio want to raise taxes. Now, the truth is socialism would not necessarily raise taxes. But What's they, your you question? Know, What's your question? What? What's your question? So look, I would like him to come in. Do you think this is a propaganda? Hi, earlier I said they're going to use her. And That's what this she's is. green. She's Muslim. They're going to use her and they're going to take full advantage of they're that. And they're going to, okay. Okay. They, they're going to, she is going to. Next question, Don. All right, they're not, they don't care. Bullshit. Okay, now I would, uh, all right, Tim, did you have a question? Yes, uh, I've heard a similar proposition thoroughly debunked by the Thorium Energy Alliance in a presentation two years ago. Uh, from the estimates of what it would take to, uh, you know, thoroughly go renewables would be the equivalent of the size of the state of Nevada filled with wind turbines. How are you going to pay for something that big and how are you going to be environmentally footprint when you're going to require that much land to go renewable? As a matter of fact, their draft proposal and, and, and the section of it goes into some detail okay. as to estimating the cost. All right. Of what you're saying. Right. Now, I don't know, since you have no exact costs, the way right is going to be, you accepted what they told you. Yes, they no did. No one has any precise figures on this. Okay. The legislation hasn't been developed, but you guys are so qualified, you were able to refute figures which are purely subjective, hypothetical. That's pretty amazing. You guys are gifted. You can refute figures which are not precise. Which are hypothetical. I don't know if they have a precise figure of implementing it. This is what they're doing. You're suggesting. Okay. They, they do talk about this. Good. They do say as much as a trillion dollars. So I don't know how you can refute it. But you haven't seen their plan. And I you couldn't have seen their plan two years ago. That was a Could different. You? It was a different. So, plan. It was a different type of a. The fact of the matter is. We don't have any choice. And among the choices, this is no longer, the, this is it. This is, this is, this, this is put forth by the, the next gen group, or among the right. founders of this, right. the millennials. And they're saying, this is it. We are not listening to Thorium guys who want to pursue their own little technology, like Edmund is, Mechanical tree. <laughs> Charlie, you're dead wrong you know, on that topic. And you're going to show up. Hey, Tim, you know. Tim, this would make a great topic I know, for your I know, speech. You can, yeah. you, can, you can explain to all of yeah. us how I, Charlie is wrong the, afterwards. Okay. One, one thing I would only, you know. All right. You know, to let any, as I wrote you, in, I wrote him an email yesterday. He did. There's no community in the United States. Would you want an experimental nuclear reactor in your town? Now let's, we're going to try this out and see if it works. <laughs> All right. Are you going to be home when they turn it on? There's a test facility. <laughs> hey, let's turn it on and see if, hey, let's see if this thing works. Hey, wow. Whoops. What about the Nevada <laughs> test range? Whoa. Yeah. Uh, you also have right. uh, oh, Let me know when up in Washington where they were oh, experimenting yeah. before. The town would want an experimental nuclear reactor. Well, you're, 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 you're <laughs> all right now. Is you're anybody, wrong because you have the test range. All right. all right, listen, Tim. Tim, I know you're enjoying having an argument with with Charlie, but uh, we, we've got other right. people I'll who have up. questions. Yeah. So yeah. we're going to have so to move on. Yeah. Now, yeah. follow um, the rules. It's not only follows the rules. All right. All right. Now, first of now, is there anybody who has a question who has not already asked a question. Uh, okay, Doug, you already had a question. And uh, all right, I have a question. All right, Doug. Okay, I want to ask you, Charlie, why do you say climate change instead of global warming? Well, I don't know. It's, I don't know. Just <laughs> okay. No, uh, no preference. One and not the same. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, but okay. All right. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'll, because climate change is a little more. Uh, 
general and uh -huh. inclusive, and uh -huh. global warming is only one facet. Uh, if you want the technical answer, yeah, I've read that. Uh, some things, I, I don't know if we can make an issue, but I believe we're discussing this climate change, okay. environmental issues, you know. No need to right. parse uh, All right. uh, this out. You know. All right. Okay. Okay. I'm not gonna. Um, all right. Now. All right. Now. So. The, okay. Ilana. Now, what? No, do you have a question? No camera. I know, Ilana. Okay. Very quick. Charlie, no. I would like to ask you your opinion no, about usually we're talking about green, right? Green's earth, right? Yeah, the green earth. What so about my, it? My question. The my green question, earth. Yeah. My question is, what do you think oxygen usually, uh, you know, those flowers and leaves and trees and branches, they <laughs> give more oxygen to the air. Yeah. Your opinion, what do you think? oxygen the same like it was five, ten years ago, but it's like a little bit less or a little bit the same? Oxygen, oxygen doesn't change by the year. Yes, it does. It's, it does? Yeah, she's right. It does. Because the chemistry, right? well, because oxygen it's itself, it's elements it's don't change. The, 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 the atmosphere yeah, does change. Does change. Yeah, the atmosphere, atmosphere does, but the oxygen yeah, okay. yeah. doesn't Fair change. Enough. Fair enough. Oxygen, oxygen is oxygen. Oxygen is... You can't change elements. The amount of oxygen changes, varies obviously, yes. But oxygen itself is is an element that is unchangeable. So atmosphere is fine. You can't change an element. Yes, you can. You can? No. Well, that's, that's on the fringe of the... All right, all right. Come on. No, 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 no. I don't know what... I'm sorry. I... Now you can question. Okay. All right. Let's let's for all right. incoherence. All right. Now let's let's move on. Now is there anybody else who has a question who has not? A coherent way, Rick, question. Rick, uh, listen. Rick, Charlie, excuse me. Question. Coherent question. Okay, Rick stuck in. He hands. can't hear me. Rick. Rick. One fool at a time. Yeah, I just wanted to remind you that the rule is one fool at a time. Now, uh, so uh, now. Uh, I want to just ask, is there anybody who has a question who has not already asked a question? No? Okay. We all agree we can, oh, please. sir. That question's on methane gas. Okay. Yeah, and then, and then, it, it escapes into the atmosphere, so that's the cause of the damage. Can't we just capture it and burn it? Would that be safer? Well, he, the, I indicated that, it, that gas could be used to used in 600 million homes and they're, they're, that's the two facets it's escaping it's, a, it's a, obviously it's more hazardous than the other greenhouse gases and two yes it should be you know but I'm not a petrochemical engineer and I'm not qualified to really speak on those issues but Apparently, they do. It, it's not in their marketing. I don't know why they're not marketing it or whatever. But as I say, I'm not in the industry. All right, uh, ma'am. They don't really care. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry Charlie. Care. All right. She's ready to rebuttal. Okay. All right, let's get that. Okay. All right. So, so, does there anybody else who has a question who has not already asked a question? No. Going once. Okay. Well, hold up. Hold up. Uh, I, I had another question, Charlie, if I may. Um, what I noticed, I noticed in your presentation that there was something listed called renewable natural gas. Can you tell? Can, can you tell me what that is, please? Methane. The methane gas. No, no, let Charlie answer. Let Charlie answer. I, at the moment, I can't. I, okay, that's I okay. That's, that. a, that's okay. That's okay. I, I know I'm just asking. I'm just um, asking. I just, I never heard of that before, and I was just, just wondering what I, that I, is. It can't be at the moment, but I do okay. know what you're okay. talking about. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, All right. Uh, okay. Any other questions? Now, we can go into a round two of questions if everybody's already had no, a question. No, Don, we should get into rebuttals okay. right well, away. Okay. Tim is, all right, our videographer is recommending that we get into rebuttals. It's uh, close listen, to the Listen, before we, before oh, we do, I though. Think you're talking about gas you produce. And, and, uh, yeah, you, you like, uh, 
Yeah, you can produce gas. Are you talking about like like methane maybe uh, from landfills? Natural natural gas. So that's fine. Okay, yeah. like 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 methane like produced from landfills, for example. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let's yeah. get into rebuttal. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. Be a now lot let's, of people want yeah. to talk. To all me. right. Now let's get into the rebuttal period. Uh, let's have another warm round of applause. All right. Let's go. 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 Let's uh, ten, including Charlie. Any hands up way in the back? Go with no? about four okay. minutes. Okay, that's uh, 11, 12. Okay, I'd say 20 minutes. No, just no, four not Four minutes, Don. Four minutes, okay. So it's going to be four minutes each. Um, and this, this, this young lady is first. Okay, go Keep ahead. Keep a strict control on time, please. Who's keeping time? Uh, four Andy, minutes. Uh, time. Who's keep? Hey, hey, Tim, are you keeping time? Uh, you got a, have you got a beeper? Let me, let, I, I. You want me to keep time? I'll keep time. I, I would prefer you do. Okay, I'll do it. Okay. Um, you know, I could almost talk four minutes about methane. Um, I went to a, a program at the University of Chicago, and uh, Professor Ingrazia was there, and he gave an hour's talk about methane. Methane is 30 times more global warming per molecule than CO2 but it also degrades within about 30 years, whereas CO2 lasts basically forever. Went off. Did I do that? Um, yeah, you may have. No. <laughs> well, anyway, um, so uh, he showed us a, a slide where it showed New York City and the amount of methane that is leaked out of pipes underneath the ground in New York City it's a tremendous amount. It leaks all the time. So you can take the amount that's leaking out of pipes going underneath the city, and then you can take the amount that leaks out of pipes going into people's houses, and then you can go down by Whiting, Indiana, and you can see the uh, BP uh, refinery down there with huge methane <coughs> flames that are coming out that are way up in the sky and they look like they're probably about 10 feet long. You could go to any fracking site and see the methane that is escaping and it is bur being burned. Uh, so there's a lot that's escaping from the ground, but there's a lot that's being burned which adds a new type of pollution to the air. Methane is really a menace. Plus it's bubbling out of the uh, uh, tundra and when the tundra begins to melt, there is methane uh, bubbles underneath the tundra, and when the methane or when the tundra begins to melt, those bubbles come to the surface, and there's methane being uh, released into the atmosphere all the time from the far north. So, you know, methane is a huge issue because uh, because it is a very dangerous gas as far as global warming goes, and uh, it, it, it's, it's something that could push us over the edge as far as global warming goes. And it's not a trivial amount at all. Uh, and the, the professor that did this was Professor Ingracia. I think he's at, uh, I, I think he's at the University of Illinois, but I'm not sure. And then um, I just wanted to say that nuclear waste is not a resource. And then the second thing I wanted to say is, or one third thing, uh, Illinois devoted $2.5 billion to bailing out failing businesses that call themselves nuclear power plants. Yeah. And this, yeah. this was partly to save jobs that were, uh, uh, I mean, the threat at, at Nuclear Energy Information Service were calling this nuclear terrorism, uh, that they were going to lose all these jobs. And the amount of money was $1.5 million per job saved. And yeah. nobody asked the workers whether they'd rather have the 1.5 million or their jobs, but um, the, all that money went to the stockholders. So, you know, this is a tremendous racket and it's coming right out of your pocket. Um, 
the racket. And I also want to in, uh, invite you to go the, to the Nuclear Energy Information Service website, NEIS.org, okay. because one of our major issues is just transitions. Uh, Zion lost 45% of its tax base when the nuclear power plant left, and there was no just transition for the people who live in Zion, etc. I think I'm done. Huh? You don't have to go for it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, I was trying to say I'm going to go Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, right on. Right. Check out my vote. I'm going to go you. next. Nuclear reactors are a racket. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. Who else would like to give a rebuttal speech? Okay. Oh, uh, Tim. Okay. You're going to. All right. Now, if, if y'all. I would say if you want a good poll, but it, 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 a lot of you guys you think I'm mad. I'm you might think that I'm somewhat preposterous for holding these views. No. You might even think that I'm somewhat uh, a little off base and a little crazy for holding my views on nuclear power. Maybe. The thing is, is that most of what NEIS says about conventional nuclear power is absolutely true. So much so that the gentleman who was headed up Oak Ridge in the 1960s thought the same thing. His name was Alvin Weinberg, and what he was addressing was trying to change the nuclear industry at that time because he knew that a conventional light water reactor was not the best way to make nuclear power. And that's why he invented the thorium, the uh, molten salt reactor, which is radically different technology than what you see. And the point of the matter is they ran one in the 1960s for almost 6,000 hours. Charlie, as far as I'm concerned, the technology's been around for 40 years. They have not done anything about it. What they have invested in is something called the fast breeder reactor, which has taken billions of dollars and has been a big boondoggle to the things. The problem is, is that we just don't have the right kind of nuclear power that can help with the planet. Yes, I agree climate change is real. Yes, I agree in a lot of the conservation initiatives. I agree with a lot of the uh, emphasis on like renewables, getting a smart grid and all that. As a matter of fact, one of your best sources for that is, chart, is a, a gentleman by the name of Thomas Friedman, columnist from the New York Times, who wrote a book, So Why We Need a Green Revolution? It was the book he wrote before uh, his current one. I'm trying to remember it. The World but, is Flat? No, it was after The World is Flat. Um, he uh, wrote it around 2000, I think, 11 or 12, and goes into all these topics about the smart grid, the electric cars, and all that. But my thing is, is that the other thing we're going to have to contend with is the other parts of the world wanting to develop. And the only way that I'm going to see that forward is we're going to need an emphasis on and the nuclear is going to be a major component of our climate change initiative. And what I'm simply going to say is this. I would not have put down taking time off work to attend four Thorium Energy Alliance conferences unless I really thought that this was a solution to the problem. And I don't go preaching this lightly, you know. You know, there is waste with uh, nuclear power, but the thing is, a lot of that long term waste, supposedly, all you got to do is recycle it. These, react these new types of reactors can recycle that waste, get rid of the long term actinides, get rid of the long term things, make new medical isotopes, and do a, a wonder. We'd still have to sequester some of it for 400 years, but we could, you know, we could definitely do that. Even with a uh, the thing is, what has happened since Germany's closed its plants, their coal emissions have gone way up and their power is a lot more expensive than it used to be. So if you think that I'm a little mad, go check out the plans at the Thorium Energy Alliance. Google, Google uh, Thorium Power. Look for videos by the name of Thomas McDowell. I think upon examination, and upon looking at the evidence, and not just some claptrap by these environmentalist nut groups about how we're going to power our world with renewables, 
We're going to need a lot more power than we think. It's a lot easier to replace a central plant right now than it is to uh, rewire the entire grid. Anyway, I am out of time. Thank you, Don. Okay. I believe it was uh, about in the 1870s or so, Karl Marx had a, had a, a party in Germany and it was called the Social Democratic Party. And at that particular time, around 1980 or so, Otto von Bismarck became the Chancellor of Germany. And he brought in certain reforms, like, like medical care, free medical care, free Social Security. He recognized the labor unions, so forth and so on. It sounds quite a bit like Roosevelt. And essentially, Roosevelt got his ideas from Norman Thomas to bring in those particular changes because you, you were in a deep depression and he had to do something about it, but he didn't want to change capitalism. So what, what it was, the same thing as Bismarck done, he made a, a few reforms to capitalism. And people liked it, and the idea eventually spread across most of Europe, like in Germany, or the uh, Swedish countries, or, or the Nordic and Swedish countries, so forth and so on and even in England. So I'm not against social, social democracy on that level because people aren't ready for actual social. <laughs> and anybody that brings in these reforms, of course, has to recognize global warming. So if these social democrats bring in something to curb social warming, and if it's not done in any other way, because, like I said, people are not ready for socialism. I don't think they'll be ready for a while. But what I see right now, we might go into a very deep depression. And that deep depression won't allow people to use fossil fuels any longer to any certain degree because they won't have enough money to drive their cars and, and fly in airplanes and things of that nature. So they might. They might do, that might do the trick, but at the same time, it'll be misery for most of the people in the United States. So I don't, I don't, I wouldn't like that to happen, but you can't depend on that. You gotta see what's gonna happen with this coming depression. And maybe the Social Democrats will get in this time and they have a, a new reform before we advance to socialism. So any way it could be done would be progressive. Any way we could do away with social warming, with uh, global warming, would be preferable. We don't have to wait for socialism. If we could do it the other way, and people are getting educated, I think, to a large degree now, because of what happened during the uh, run for president by Bernie Sanders. So people are accepting the word socialism, like they never accepted before. And there are certain parties that are growing very rapidly in that direction. So any way we could do it, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. we should get it done. Because without that, there won't be no future for any life on this planet. Good evening. I I'm David Travis. Uh, when I was a boy, I had a chemistry set. And with a handful of a chemical called sodium bisulfate Here, I can't and some powdered iron and a little bit of water, I actually produced hydrogen gas. Excuse me, can, we, can everybody be quiet so we can hear Dave Travis speak, please? Thank you. They go right on, though. Okay, go on, Dave. Uh, 
And I actually produce uh, hydrogen gas, which is a very clean burning gas, if not the cleanest burning gas. Uh, it's been around for a long, long time. So all of these highfalutin things they talk about replacing uh, uh, fossil fuels with and so on and so forth, I think is all just a lot of pie in the sky. And what's more, they go on about uh, with these Garden of Eden type cures for these nightmarish problems that they talk about us having in the future that is all a lot of BS. Uh, I think that um, uh, if you leave a free market, the free market will develop a means for dealing with whatever, yeah. as we always have. Yeah, uh, one clue at a time, Charlie, please shut up. Uh, as I was saying, I, okay, do you want to um, no, have no, a debate no, 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 with me no, no, no. while everybody else waits? Is that what Jay, you want? Jay, just Jay, Jay, His turn. Royal Highness Socialist wants to do that. Okay. Uh, as I was uh, saying that, um, if I, and incidentally, if I have, I, I have seldom heard a more boring presentation than I have tonight. Bob 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 I think that um that uh I wouldn't come anymore. There there are a lot of better presentations that could have been made. And this this one was a pretty much a stinko presentation. Thank you. Okay, come on. Don't come back. All right. Yeah. Don't come back. Don't come back. Don't come back. Thank you, Kimball. <laughs> We're at the 11th hour and the 59th minute. Uh, I I don't know what it was like when Grandpa uh, Foss and Grandpa Henry uh, went off to train to be in the military during World War II. Uh, but that's where we're at. Uh, not to wage war against planet Earth, but to wage peace with planet Earth and within ourselves. Uh, so, waging peace is not something that uh, the government has groomed us to think is the top priority, but we know better, we don't listen to the government. <laughs> We the people have been practicing this forever, ever since great grandma and great grandpa and on and on and on told us uh, there has to be another way and this is the big step in that overall caravan of there's another way uh, living in a balance with the biosphere. Uh, windmills are not a new technology and they have been uh, increasingly advanced to create wind turbines. Uh, the solar panels were on the roof of the White House in the 1970s and they've been made even more uh, cost effective now in the 2000 teens, almost the 2020s. Public transit uh, has existed in its current form in the United States for over 100 years on a grid system, especially in such a great grid system like Chicago and area, where you don't have to own a car. I know that's blasphemous to say in the United States of America, especially in the presence of capitalists, so I'll say it again because I love saying it. You don't have to own a car. God, that feels good to say. You can lease one. You can rent one. You can rent one. You can borrow one that's owned by another family member, so there's just one car in the driveway instead of ten tanks. Uh, I don't know. I just love public transit. I like saying Happy New Year to the bus driver when I get on that bus. Yes. And when I get off that train, yes. I like saying Happy New Year to the train operator. It yes. just feels right. Uh, when they start mass producing those Elon Musk Tesla cars that are affordable and fuel efficient, I'll think about getting a van with a wheelchair ramp, so I'll still say you don't have to own a car anyway. 
Uh, local farm and community gardens at the kibbutz scene uh, provided plenty of food, clothing, housing, educational, health care materials for over 70 years ago. Uh, look into it. Uh, it's not out of our capacity to transition to that. Bicycles have been around for a long time. <laughs> And now electric bikes make it even more convenient to take the bike even in the cold season. And this is a key uh, area of interest where you can tell your local legislators there is something you can do that is very cheap to do and easy to do and popular to do. If you want to be a progressive and you want to be a green, then okay, we'll, we'll roll the dice and hold you to this uh, promise. Build canopies over the main east, west, and north, south street sidewalk pedestrian ways in your community and people can ride their bikes year round not just the two wheel bikes but the three wheel bikes so they can go to the grocery store and the library with their basket on the back. Uh, co-ops are not a new concept. We can have co-ops. Uh, I think David Suzuki, a uh, graduate of University of Chicago who's received the uh, 2012 Enamory Ethics Prize, 2009 Right Livelihood Award, and United Nations uh, Environmental Protections Global 500 Award said, uh, we have to make it so that it's un-American to be anti-green. You have to put pressure on people who are denialists and just say it's un-American, just like it's un-American not to go to World War II and be willing to defend your country. Uh, civilization, 10 seconds. Uh, civilizationism, equalityism, respect Mother Earthism, we the peopleism, and oh yeah, that other thing that's very, very, very old, sharing. Happy uh, whatever anniversary to the College of Complex tonight at midnight. Okay. Thank you, Kimball. All right. I am a capitalist who's not on a car, and I'm okay with that. Uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez seems like a nice, well-intentioned young woman, but she's absolutely misguided in her democratic socialism. It is a bullshit idea. Right. One fool at a time. It disregards history, economics, human nature. Uh, her plan, this Green New Deal, is estimated to cost two trillion dollars. Uh, she wants to raise taxes uh, on top earners up to 70% of their income. Yeah! yeah. Finally! Humbug! Back to Eisenhower. Give everybody a bailout in the form of abolishing the income tax. This will stimulate the economy uh, by people spending uh, more money and saving more money. And maybe people that could then afford green uh, technology and such. Uh, there's actually some solutions that cost zero dollars that we can implement immediately, like actually holding polluters accountable. If they steal clean air or they steal clean water, let's hold them accountable. Let's also sell the national parks to the Sierra Club. Uh, Let's not, and all wildlife refuge, uh, refuges and other protected areas, let's give it to the Sierra Club, let them manage it. That sounds a lot better than uh, trashing the parks with the government shutdown. So if, if the government uh, lets the trash, you know, if the government's supposed to lead on green energy, how they take care of the parks is an indicator that they probably will not be any good on green energy. What's also in subsidies in all sectors, that includes energy producers, manufacturers, farmers, uh, everything, because uh, this will stop artificial demand and it'll save energy. Uh, let's also privatize roads. This way, all the free road, uh, all the, you know, getting all the, the you know, the roads that you don't have to pay to get on. Think of all the pollution. If we are to privatize the roads, people would charge people to use their roads, and therefore people would be less reluctant to use their gas guzzlers. Uh, and just for good measure, let's just abolish the minimum wage. This will, uh, instead of forcing people to be in unions or to have like a guaranteed jobs guarantee, just abolish the minimum wage and you can provoke people into union membership that way. Thank you. All right. Uh,
Let's sell off the libertarians. That's right. I have, I have, I have more of a rebuttal uh, material for uh, the rebutters than, than Charles. I actually agree with a lot of the proposals. I think it's the right direction to go. Uh, just something I want to throw out there is, uh, um, is uh, they're, they're talking about methane. There's a lot of methane that comes from cattle. I, how many people out here like a good steak? Yeah, I, I love I love a good steak. I really do. Uh, unfortunately, steak doesn't love us. I, I don't know how I don't know how to live with that, but th that's just reality. They've done a lot of studies on it from an environmental standpoint. I mean, cattle create and and hogs create a lot of methane, and, and then you've got the added problem of these hog farms where. Um, yeah, humans sure. can't even build an outhouse <laughs> anymore. Zoning prohibits that. You have to have septic tanks that are going into water water treatment 20? plants. But with these hog farms, you have like massive areas of these these ponds that hold the uh, feces and uh, basically the waste of pigs, and it's a horrible environmental impact on uh, on whole communities. And the cattle is a big problem too, because like for example. Um, Brazil is a huge exporter of, uh, of beef, and uh, and where are all the cattle farms? They're basically where the rainforests used to be. What they do is they go into the rainforests and they want grazing areas, so they rip down these wonderful old growth trees and let uh, grain, um, and then for grass, for uh, yeah. for grazing cattle, and then the soil isn't really good for grass, so it kind of it stops really being productive, and then they rip down more trees, and the rainforest is getting just smaller and smaller. And this is a huge filter for the Earth's atmosphere, so it's a big, it's a big problem. But on another note, um, uh, just meat is really bad. It, it's not good for people. There, there are a lot of studies that I read. A great book called The China Study. Has anybody seen, read that book? Basically, when you do medical studies in the U.S., they'll they'll study you know groups of people you know 30 people, 50 people, a long-term study. You might you might get a thousand people. In China, they did this study, and they invited an American doctor to participate. And they did a they did basically a study of 500,000 people in China. It's a fascinating book because the premier wanted to know what makes people sick. Why are, why are people getting cancer? Is there a way we can discover this? So they do this massive medical study. You don't read about it much in the US, except for this book. And they determine that meat is like has a huge impact on disease. The more meat you eat, or meat-based products, the more disease you have. So um, I recommend the book. It's fascinating eating. It really pushes people towards vegetarianism. Uh, for rational reasons, but I think that uh, polluting your own body is also an important <coughs> issue to consider. So, yeah, well, um, I kind of agree with almost everything in the talk, and I'm very when I heard about this um, new Green Deal, um, I had a time to research it, so I'm glad Charlie brought out. Uh, uh, what is the official uh, agenda here and um, I'm on board with it naturally because uh, I'm an environmentalist and a uh, um, and, uh, someone who looks toward uh, uh, a kind of a um, uh, at least a government um, guided uh, uh, role in an economy that is embracing of uh, environmental uh, safety, if we say that, you know, because uh, climate change or global warming, whatever you want to call it, is uh, projected to become so dangerous in the coming years, and uh, uh, so we need things like this. Uh, I just don't want the, uh, um, the green uh, uh, agenda part of the Democratic Party to completely reject the possibility of uh, other technological fixes might become necessary. Um, certainly reforestation uh, would be a great thing if there was like a project um, sort of like a you know mobilize as if it was as if it was a war but a war against um, carbon dioxide um, to uh, 
uh, plant all these regular trees, uh, biological trees, but, um, you know, people that have been working on uh, things, um, um, certainly uh, CO2 scrubbing uh, from the atmosphere uh, would be good. And, uh, and uh, I'll, I'll throw a, a bone to my friend uh, Tim that uh, I'm perfectly in favor of the Chinese experimenting with these thorium reactors because if they, if they work it out and they only, you know, kill off a million Chinese, uh, you know, what's that to us? Of course I'm joking. Uh, anyway, uh, it, it, has sounded, it has sounded in a couple uh, talks that uh, uh, Tim uh, either gave himself or he had some people uh, come in who were, uh, were uh, proponents of the, the thorium reactor. It does seem to be safer than uh, the... Uh, normal kind of reactors, yes, it is. and I suspect that um, it's been suppressed, sort of like the green technologies have been suppressed. Um, oil companies and the, the, the uh, companies that build the uh, uh, you know the uh, uranium plutonium reactors, they you know they wanted to have a monopoly on things as long as possible. But um, uh, I wish we had you know real impetus, which we can't have under a Republican administration. So um, it's too bad the pendulum went the wrong way for a long time. Hopefully, we're going to be changing that back. Um, whether you know Trump stays in as a you know a clownish character, uh, hopefully only a clownish character, that we can maybe beat the Republicans with a stick for many years afterwards, um, and that uh, if the the good side of the Democratic Party, the green green side of it, wins out, then uh, maybe we will have a fight, fighting chance um, at uh, having a sustainable economy, um, and that there there will be enough jobs. And what I'd like to see, um, from a pragmatic standpoint, has nothing to do with um, uh, anything other than that. Uh, I wish that we had a better world for everyone. Um, I'd like to see. Uh, people making enough money that we could reduce the work week. And, um, and, and that, well, part of that will have to come from increased taxes on the rich. So get used to it, and uh, AOC is on the right, right track there. But uh, we would like to have a, a, a better world where uh, uh, people have better lives, and uh, one part of that would be a sustainable economy with a lower, uh, lower work week. Very good. Um, I'm Ellen Corley. Um, as always, I like to say that I, I love the Free Speech Forum. I think it's very important that we're talking about these things. Um, I, my background, um, I just came up with my idea for the next speech is going to be, or my next talk is about the war on science. Uh, something I've been researching, starting as a uh, in graduate school to be a teacher, studied educational philosophy and John Dewey and um, the, talked about science and really the purpose of, what is science? That's the question. I had written a paper actually in college that science is a new religion and you know and it, it really looking back on it I was on the right track. I didn't quite know how to develop the idea but uh, it the truth is we need, I think, to approach science subjectively. Each person is a scientist, right? And it's up to us to test hypothesis and find truth and help each other find the truth. What's really scary is I, what I see as a ideology of deception that has been waged like a war on science. And I've got a good book on this that I'm going to be looking into, but uh, it really is the idea that, you know, intelligent design versus, um, you know, Darwin. I mean, this is an old political trick to really shoot the messenger, uh, you know, deny the science. Really, um, I've told y'all, my stepfather was the chairman of the Manhattan Institute, which I realized was developed like all of these American Enterprise Institute, um, to make up fake science, really. They came up with the bell jar 
showing you know blacks are lower intelligence they they invested a lot in climate denial they invested a lot in um free market you know um you know this idea of peak oil you know like fracking isn't making it worse um you know it's you know people say i overuse the word fascist but uh it's it, you know grossly corrupt and um you know to the point of satanic uh being you know i think that's what andy says i agree with what andy anderson says for the most part because he refers to literature you know i i mean and it sounds it sounds silly but uh i had a steady diet of a stepfather you know he was he he was brainwashed by these people. It's like a cult, and you know, you, you, sociology proves nothing. Like economics is a science, but it depends on what your facts are. You know, people say uh, say you don't have the right to your own facts. Well, that's true. It works both ways, right? And let's you know stick to the facts. But boy, it's really hard when millions are being spent by the media monopoly. You know, it serves for them to be down to five big media companies that, uh, you know, can get, you know, buy the politicians and, uh, you know, just, it it's costs money, I guess. But I, I really do doubt this idea that 70, uh, this New Deal idea, the Green New Deal, there, it was, came up, Thomas Friedman came up with the idea, and it, you know, it just makes it really easy for Republicans to just say, you're not taking my taxes 60%. And that's where I think looking at it like an anarchist is the best way. Um, okay, thank you. And a bank yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 the country. Yeah, this Green New Deal stuff. Charlie, you know, Wall Street and Big Oil and Big Wall Street, and, <laughs> they're not going to let this stuff happen. I'm sorry, they control the country. Big War Department, all that. You think we're going to have some kind of Green New Deal? No way. Pie in the sky. Hey, uh, just as a side note, who thinks here that the close, closing down of the uh, American government is a way to get rid of all these agencies? I do. I bet you Bannon would love this. I think this is a way to this is a good way to get rid of food stamps, HUD, EPA. You name the agency, you just shut those down. Shut them down. You know, you put the money in the military. I think this is where this is trending. Shut down food stamps. Yeah. yeah, and then it could result in a revolution in this country, but I could see this being you know, a right-wing uh, maneuver. Yeah, shut down eat. shut down the government. Let them eat cake. Yeah, yeah let them eat cake. Make weekend America great again. Guillotine, guillotine. Oh, it'll just be a revolution. Guillotine, you know? guillotine. Ah. guillotine. guillotine. So yeah, we've seen some the more crap. This is the military is going to fight for. They're going to fight for Trump. <laughs> Anyway, that's my uh, little side take here on the, uh, the right Spoken wing. Spoken like Illuminati. a true Sox fan. Hey, Tim, Tim, one fool at a time. Hey, right wing radio, nut job right wing radio, told Trump to jump a couple weeks ago. Good. And closed down the government. Guess what Trump said? All right. How high? No. <laughs> you don't think Trump's controlled by right-wing radio? All right, so, um, Charlie, now that you have brought up infrastructure and your pie-in-the-sky green economy, let's see if you can get the New York-Chicago bullet train going, since your buddy's with Lipinski and he's the only one that understands transportation in Washington, D.C. So we'll get a report for what's your next trip to Washington D.C., Mr. Lobbyist. So I'm going to Springfield first. Okay. Next month. Gotta, well, you're gotta tell them what to do. You're the guy. You and Lipinski. Then I'll go to Washington after that. Yay. Okay. And bring up New York, Chicago bullet train because I get I guarantee you the other 500 people in Congress are gonna. They, they're just worried about how much oil. Lobbying's an honorable profession. Yeah. Well, Charlie, 
It's in your hands. The whole future. Every other country in the world is building bullet trains. Huh? The future of the world is in your hands. Yeah, you're in church. Every other country, other country in the world is building bullet trains which are sustainable. They use electricity, could use thorium, could use geothermal. Gets us off oil. What do you want me to do all the work and report to you? Hey, yes! <laughs> I'll be the Trump. Yes. You, you, hey, you know I got all your buddies in Washington, D.C. Report to me next week. All right, so um, just a couple other things. Um, you know, another thing about closing down the government and the wall. You know, can we have some data on the wall? I mean, how many drugs come through the, you know, the border? And, you know, I, all it is is like posturing about this stuff. <laughs> like, there's no information or no data. Or oh yeah, there is. Real go news. to go to uh, This American Life okay. last week on on uh, the public broadcasters. Plenty of data about walls. Other countries building them and the effects they've had. Well, not, the only reason I would want a wall is to stop drugs somewhat. Now, I haven't heard anything about how much drugs get carried over the border. Uh, one other thing here. Don, how much time do we have? Actually, you guys done it four minutes already. Has it been that much fun? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. We're out of time. It's only 20 yeah. well, no, okay. okay. you, know, you used up your four. No, we got we to keep it on so that we don't. Uh, okay. Well, just wait. So just wrap one it up. up. One other, um, let me wrap, wrap this up. So, okay. yeah, I think the closing down the government was going to eventually uh, get rid of the uh, yeah, food stamps, health care, social security, <laughs> EPA. And some of the other of these things. I think that's just a prank. Okay. This is a prank. Yeah. She's getting the bums rush. Okay. Now, yeah. it's, uh, okay. I think you're right. Hold you're your right. applause. I think you're no right. respect. All right, don't applaud it. <laughs> All right. All right. Does any, would anybody else like to give a rebuttal speech? Yes, I would. Okay, come oh, on up, yeah, Dave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, here's a railroad. Man. Charlie, you're our guy, man. But you're you're going to get a railroad t-shirt. We heard, a, we heard a lot of talk this evening about the building of walls. Well, but first of all, we used to have a president in this country by the name of John Kennedy who believed in tearing down a wall. That's number one. Number two, we also heard some talk about, gee, uh, we have a wall with guard towers and whatnot. Well, they used to have one in Berlin. It was called the Berlin Wall. It was designed not just to, not to keep people out, but to keep them in. Yep. So I'm totally against the building of any wall on the southern border. In fact, Dave Travis, when he was here tonight, made the first sensible suggestion I've ever heard of that. Why not build a kibbutz down there instead and have the people come into that? And I actually think that's a good idea. Build a what? A kibbutz. kibbutz. <laughs> An agricultural colony down there. See, I actually think that's a good idea. Why not? Why not? So, I'm sorry, I'm not a fan of, of walls. Also, I don't agree with AOC, as she calls herself, but I'm in favor of giving her a chance. So, would she show what she can do? And as for that congresswoman from Michigan who said, oh, well, we're going to impeach the motherfucker, well, perhaps she shouldn't have used language quite like that. But I've advocated Trump's impeachment here, although not at the moment since I don't think it would pass the Senate. And I've used some language that wasn't all that much weaker than hers in order to do it. So, no, she made a misstep there, but it's not the big deal that the Republicans are trying to paint it against. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Charlie. Right. Got the last Anybody word. else? No, no, no. Hold on. Anybody else want to give a rebuttal speech? They got nothing to say. Anyway. Okay. Um, I just want to say a few words. And, okay, Don. Um, all right. First of all, first of all, I would uh, like to thank Charlie for putting together this presentation at the last minute. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I thought you did a really good job. And uh, very interesting information. It's inspired a lot of discussion here. Now, the second thing I would just like to say is that since we are not, since we are not charging uh, a tuition tonight, um, this um, the, I remember uh, normally a third of the tuition goes to our waitress. And so I would I would just remember that she works hard for the money, so you better treat her right and tip her generously, because uh, okay, that's going to be your contribution to. So. 
Now, second, uh, now, now Sid, um, you, you mentioned that um, you, you, Bismarck actually was Chancellor of Germany in the 19th century, not in 1980. Yeah. No, I understand. 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18. Right, right. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, I want to um, talk about, I want to talk about the term global, I want to talk about the term climate change versus global warming, because I asked Charlie about that. Um, I will tell you all where the term climate change came from. It came from a Republican pollster named Frank Luntz. Uh, he specialized in focus groups. And talking to focus groups, he found that the term global warming alarmed people. It scared them. Now, Luntz had been hired by lobbies who worked for the oil industry, and they were trying to find a way to reframe the dialogue on, on global warming uh, in, a, uh, in a way that would cause people to deprioritize it, you know? And, and what he found was that the term global warming really alarmed people, it scared them, and he didn't want people to be scared. Frank Luntz, you know, as, a, as a conservative, he's, he's a rabble soother, not a rabble rouser. So, so he, what he found was, was when, when, he, when he tried out the term climate change, he found that people, it didn't bother people as much. It, it didn't sound so bad. I mean, after all, global warming sounds weird, but climate change is inevitable, isn't it? Yeah. So, so words mean things. Rush Limbaugh said so, and and I agree with him. Rush is right about that. And and so, so I use the term global warming because I want people to be alarmed. This is a serious business. Anybody tells you that it doesn't, that it, it only affects the poor and and minorities, bunk, because because it's gonna it. We all need the environment to live on. No environment, no economy. So it affects everybody. You know, Trent Lott lost his house in Pascagoula, Mississippi, even though he's a rich, even though he was a rich senator, along with all the other people. Okay, so it affects everybody, and and we need to impress that on people. Uh, I also want to say, we need to try any. We need to, and it isn't something. It isn't a future problem that might happen in the future. It's now. The forest fires in California. The, the increased intensity of the hurricanes, the, uh, the, the melting ice caps, the rising ocean levels, it's not a future disaster, it's a present disaster. It's hap we're, we're, we're suffering the effects of it already. Now, the other, we need to look, we need to get past our own ideological blinders. We need to be open-minded. We need to look for any solution, whatever works, instead of saying, well, the only solution we can accept is one that involves socialism, because that's our thing. Or the only solution we can accept is one that involves... Um, Capitalism. Well, yeah, yeah, because that's our thing. Exactly, good point. All right. Uh, and, you know, if, if we can't produce, if we can't produce enough energy to, to meet our needs with renewables, I'm willing to, you know, I would, I would be willing to have nuclear energy as a supplement to that. Yeah. I would consider that if we can do it safely. Now, um, now I do think that talking about socialism and trying to equate that with, with, with environmentalism is a, is not a good idea when you're talking to non-socialists, because, because to to people who are not socialists, socialism sounds very negative. It's going to turn people off. Um, you know, for those of you who are interested in this issue, what I would recommend is you write to your congressman, write write to your senators about it, get involved. Another thing you can do is join the Sierra Club. I'm a member. Uh, Rick Stuckey isn't here now; he went home, but he was here tonight. He's a member of the Sierra Club Air and Energy Committee, and so am I. Um, I would, uh, you know, get involved. Look, look things up on the internet. With that, I will. Um, I think I've run over time, so I'm gonna. I'll yield the microphone to Charlie now. All right, Charlie. All right. All right. Well, well, well. Thank you all for coming out on a frosty night. And I hope I wasn't too tedious in explaining this. To me, it is a little interesting that we've seen many proposals on what to do in, in, in ecologically. But this one proposal is to not only implement ecological solutions, but to do it through the process of socialism, which is interesting to me, at least, you know. Uh, we, we don't think the key to the term is the transition. I, I like the term implementation. 
Uh, it, uh, you said when I write contracts, how do you implement something? Over what period of time? Who's responsible for it? Uh, so yes, uh, is, are these conjectures uh, most assuredly? There was something here about using hydrogen as a fuel. Uh, the individuals in here, I do believe that hydrogen is not a recommended gas in the event it escapes. And I not I could stand corrected in this regard. The other thing regarding hydrogen. Uh, to the person who seems to speak so knowledgeably, is that it's not proven to be workable, at least in transit buses. Um, as uh, Now, here's the thing that happens. You can come up with these experimental processes. I know this from the history of railroads and steam engines. There were, there were literally thousands of experiments with steam engines, getting them to operate in all sorts of different fashions, using all sorts of different fuels. The only thing is that running them on in 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 in, in the in the laboratory they function perfectly, but in the polluted world and uh, out there with it, it's it's a difficult environment in which to operate a vehicle, and most of these failed in that regard. They could not remain operational. And I think that's the situation with buses. Now, I subscribe, because I'm in the transit group, to three trade publications re regarding buses. And I must admit to you publicly that I've not looked, looked at one issue in several years. I have a stack of them, but it's just not a topic. I, you know, the buses and stuff. <laughs> but anyhow, um, anyhow, it was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Please come back and happy anniversary. Gamble okay. us out. Yeah. Dismiss us. Gamble us out. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get back where you came from. Well, this concludes, all right. Well, this concludes our program for tonight. So uh, thank you and good night. How old is the college? How old is the college? 68 years old.